Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act. Psalm 37, verse 3. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing. bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. In peace let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church, and for the uni unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Christ the Lamb, who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Old Testament reading from Deuteronomy chapter 34. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead as far as Dan, and Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah as far as the western sea. 
the Negev, and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. And the Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to your offspring. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows the place of his burial to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was undimmed and his vigor unabated. And the people of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. And there has not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, none like him for all the signs and the wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh, and to all his servants, and to all his land. For all the mighty power and all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The King in his might loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God, worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called upon his name. They called to the Lord, and he answered them. In the pillar of the cloud he spoke to them. They kept his testimonies and the statue that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You are a forgiving God, but an avenger of their wrongdoing. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Does in the is now and will be forever. Amen. The Epistle from Hebrews chapter 3. Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, who is faithful to appoint him who appointed him. Just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house, For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant, to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house, if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our hope. This is the word of the Lord.
This morning, the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the ninth chapter. Beginning verse 28. Now, about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep. But when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that, you, that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. As he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them. And they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. This is the gospel of the Lord. God's grace, mercy, and peace be to you today in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Well, I'm so thankful you're here, and I hope that you've come to see Jesus also. See, Peter, James, and John had opportunity going up on the mountain to pray, but they had seen Jesus before. This was entirely different. Can you imagine them growing up hearing about the stories sitting on grandma's knee of great Moses who went up on the mountain, great Moses and all the miracles that were done through him? They, of course, 
are living this moment without the clarity on that mountain with Jesus and Elijah and Moses, without the revelation, without the texts of our New Testament given to you and me as inheritors of the confession that our great high priest Jesus has given. But for those three, Peter, James, and John, anyone or anything greater than Moses would be hard to imagine. In fact, our text today in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, may be a shock to them to consider Jesus as greater than Moses. Well, maybe rightly so. Maybe that would be a shock. I mean, what Moses did really is awesome. When he faced Pharaoh, it's as if he faced Putin, North Korea, the Shah of Iran, and China combined, and told the Pharaoh to give away his economic reign and letting these servants go. Or the claim we have clearly in Deuteronomy, there's no greater prophet than Moses who spoke to God face to face as a man talks to a friend. Greater than Moses? Consider this, Jesus. The language sounds very gentle in Hebrews. Consider Jesus. Consider him. You know, the voice of the Father in our gospel lesson in Luke 9, 35, really was... Or sounds more absolute, maybe even clearer and less of an invitation, more of a command. This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him with my emphasis. Suggesting the father makes it even more clear and pointed to consider and consider him strongly to listen to him. But how was it that Jesus is more worthy of glory than these others? Now, Peter, and this I just learned or thought about this week from a pastor rule, and I'll give credit to, had mentioned what seemed like a reasonable idea. What if we, what if we stayed a while? Let me set up shelters. But the question is, did he mistake the moment as a chance for them to Glory in Moses and Elijah? Did he want to stay there because he didn't have Moses and Elijah back at his house? But they had come up the mountain and they would be headed back down the mountain with the glory of God in flesh himself, in Jesus. Did they miss something? Maybe so. And so the Father makes it clear. Listen to him, my son. Consider him worthy of more glory than Moses. Of course, what you know and what Peter, James, and John would soon learn is that God's version of glory looks surprisingly like what you and I might consider shame as he will be fastened to wood and left hanging naked before the world. They don't know it yet, at least don't know the gravity of the situation at hand. But John later would write, Gospel of John, chapter 114, we have seen his glory. But what about Moses? Deuteronomy claiming the greatest of the prophets at least no one has come greater since, it says specifically. Moses goes back, way back. People have been flocking to him for years, centuries. And at first glance, Jesus seemed to have come along only recently. 
But before his incarnation of Mary, the Son of God was with God in the beginning, creating all things. And even from eternity, with God and himself creating. So even though your mind may be captivated by your favorite music artist or by others who would be showcased on your favorite show, so they had Moses who separated the sea. But consider Jesus who walked on the water. Moses caused bread to be found on the ground after taking his concerns to God. But Jesus, Jesus himself is the bread of life. Moses made water flow from a rock. Remember that story? But Jesus, Jesus is the living water. Moses spoke all those sacred words that we have recorded in the first five books of the Bible, the Torah. But Jesus himself is the word of God. The gospel of John says, the very word himself. And really, if you hear Moses correctly, he's whispering to you. You ought to consider Jesus. That glory the disciples saw also on Moses' face there on the mountain, it's the reflected glory of Jesus himself, God in flesh now. That promised land toward which he journeyed, that really is rest that's only found in Jesus. So consider him. Moses is great, but consider this Jesus. Moses took our people from slavery toward freedom. But that exodus, as glorious as it was, John might have said, is just not even on the same level as the exodus Jesus performs. Through death to life, with the promise of the same for his people. You know, quite frankly, the Israelites made it to the promised land And did that stop their problems? Did that stop sinning? Did it stop people from dying? Did it stop wars that we see on the television again today? No. But consider Jesus, who gives you rest that's beyond all that we could speak of or know about apart from the revelation of God and his word. Slavery and sin was conquered by the shame of this Jesus, by his being nailed to wood. Live and believe in him, he claims, and you will never die. John chapter 11. See, the real difference is that Jesus, as God's son, sets us free forever, not just for a little while or not just outwardly, but in the soul and in the life. Eternal life. The real difference is this Jesus is God himself. That God has come. And now you see the Father when you see his face. You will see God. God who's invisible. God who can't be seen. Now will be seen in the face of this Jesus. Consider him. Consider him above all the other things that your heart longs for, or yearns for. As we go into Lent, beginning Wednesday night, 630, we'll invite you and challenge you to follow in Christ's footsteps, who for 40 days fasted and prayed and took the devil head on. We'll hear in next Sunday morning sermon. But Jesus here is the one for them to understand and for us as well. He's different. And this passage in Hebrews today lays it out. Moses was faithful as a servant in God's house. The end of our text says. 
But there's something different about this Jesus. Consider him. It's a difference between a house and the builder. And it says specifically the builder is God. What does that make Jesus? God himself. Moses was faithful as that servant in the house, but Jesus was faithful over God's house as a son. And then in John chapter 8, 35 and 36, it says a servant, Moses, doesn't remain in the house forever, but the son, Jesus, does. He remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you are free. Indeed, truly, for real. So do consider this Jesus, would, wouldn't you? I invite you to consider him with me for 40 days through Lent, beginning Wednesday night. Because he does offer freedom today, now. Freedom to live in him and not die, ever, spiritually. And considering him, do heed the voice of God and listen to Jesus. Listen to him in his word. Trust in him, in his sacraments. Listen to this one who not only speaks to you about your life this week and what you're supposed to do and your schedule, and your, but even more than that, speaks to you about this one who is transfigured that must go and die. Listen to him when he says it in Luke, right before the Luke 9 transfiguration. And he says it again right after. I must go to Jerusalem and I will be crucified and on the third day rise. He's specific. He's clear. Listen, this is what you need. Maybe not more self-help books. Maybe not some of the other Stuff that invades my house when I turn on the screen. This is the one you need. The one who's crucified. He's worth more glory than Moses. This is his exodus. And this is our exodus as well. Out of sin, out of death, and into life eternal. Even the great gifts of of faith heroes that God has placed around you, you can be thankful for. But know that Jesus is worthy of even more glory, of your time. For 40 days, that could mean fasting. It may mean taking on with us reading through a portion of Scripture, or we're studying also the large catechism, which summarizes all of Scripture. Christ is worthy of our time and meditation. And let this Lent season, let these 40 days be a kind of a spiritual boot camp to find what's real. Listen to him and follow him. Now, as they go down that mountain, we are headed down to down next week with Jesus into the wilderness to a world of sin where we are tempted When you go home or leave this place and back to work tomorrow and all the other challenges that you have, God says you're not alone. Consider this, that he who came to you in your baptism is with you now and always. Consider this, that he is the one that sets you free. And when he says it, it's true. Because if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Consider this. Consider Jesus. Amen. So now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in faith in Christ. We confess our faith with a Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, 
who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace.